Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let us go through deadlock prevention. So I hope everyone remembers the deadlock concept of operating system. So the, may, the same concept will be applying here. So the protocol assures that the system will never enter the deadlock state. So in operating system also, we have discussed deadlock prevention in which we explained about four concepts of deadlock and we need to avoid any of these one or all then we can prevent the deadlock so the first thing is mutual exclusion mutual exclusion is nothing but only one process should execute a particular resource or use a resource hold and wait so if a particular process is you is holding a particular resource it's if it is requesting for another resource then it should reuse a resource first and whenever both the resources are available only then it should go for execution and no preemption once everything is allocated like resources and everything it should never stop for another process and next circular weight circular weight is nothing but there should be no situation of circular weight like t1 is requesting the resource of t2 t2 is requesting for the resource of t3 t3 is requesting for the resource of t4 t4 is requesting for the resource of t1 here we formed a cycle here it, the process continues continues and we never get the solution so i hope everyone got a small idea on the four things that causes deadlock so any one of these should be breaked fine okay so knowingly or unknowingly we already break few of these by using the concurrency control algorithms guys so previously in concurrency control algorithms few are avoided to deadlock fine so to ensure no hold or wait each transaction locks all the data before the transaction execute so this we already seen in 2pl i hope everyone remembers that fine okay so similarly to ensure no cyclic weight imposed on the ordering or non-ordering numbers we have just gone through tree protocol in tree protocol we told that there should be no cycles so cycles causes deadlock so that's the reason why we told no cycles so that is nothing but the tree protocol so these are the two things which we already implemented using concurrency control fine okay so even by using time stamping also we can do this and even timestamping and we are also having the concept okay so now let us go through the usage of timestamp so how we can prevent this by using timestamp so assume ti requests for a data item currently held by tj so let us assume uh, item q so let us assume this as item q which is held by tj so tj is having that item q and ti is requesting for it so we will be fixing a waiting time guys we'll be fixing waiting time for it so basically it should not request for a long time or it should not wait for a long time so basically if time stamp of ti is less than time stamp of tj so if time stamp of ti is less means it came way long ago and it keep on requesting for this it means that ti is older than tj yeah that's what we have told so here ti is allowed because it is old it's waiting from long time right so if you are waiting for a long time everyone will give you a chance right to do something or to do some work fine so similarly here also will be allotting its wait so it is allowed to wait otherwise ti is the younger than tj then about it so if ti is younger means ti is the new process then we will be aborting it and restarting it later whenever the time stamp you time stamp restarts fine okay and we are we will also be using the concept of a wound wait schedule so here we will be using if t as a time stamp of ti is less than time stamp of tj so this is also the same condition which we used for wait die scheme fine so in this scheme we will be restarting the process guys if we see that so then about tj and restart the following timestamp so if timestamp of ti is greater than timestamp of tj then we will be allowing it so i hope everyone got at least a small idea on this so the second method is time out based scheme so in this you will be fixing a particular time slot in that time slot it should be done or else you will be releasing everything fine so based on lock timeouts a transaction sorry a transaction that has requested a lock waits for at most a specific amount of time so it will be waiting for a specific amount of time once if the lock is not granted within that particular time transaction is said to be timeout and it will roll back to the initial state and it restarts 
like if you assume the best example for this is OTP guys. So whenever you do any bank transaction, they will be saying in 30 seconds, you need to enter the OTP or you need to resend the OTP. So this is the best example for that. Okay. So basically while we are discussing about all these things, the main thing that we need that we notify is a starvation also. So a transaction is starved if it cannot process for the identify identity period. So if let us assume there are many transactions and the last transaction will be keep on waiting, waiting, waiting. So at one particular moment of time, it can lead to trans, it can lead to starvation. So I hope everyone got at least a small idea on deadlock prevention guys. So we will be using already we are having 2PL method and in graphs also we have two solutions for this prevention and we are also using the timestamp and this is a timeout based scheme. So I hope everyone got at least a small idea on this. So in the next tutorial we will be going through deadlock recovery. Thank you. Thanks for watching.